Hey, so this video is going to take us through doing some of the most common non-parametric equivalents um, of various statistical tests, including independent and paired t-tests and repeated measures and independent ANOVA. And this is all going to be done in SPSS in this video. So I've opened up apathy.sav and what we see is we've got two groups group one and group two that either took ecstasy or alcohol on a Saturday night. And in this case, we've got separate groups that took them on Tuesday as well. And we wanted to measure their apathy score on the day following taking those drugs. So apathy being they're not wanting to do anything but binge Netflix the next day. So we're going to compare for Sunday people who took ecstasy and people who took alcohol. Now, what I'm going to do first is determine whether or not their uh, data are normally distributed. So I'm going to go up to Analyze. I'm going to select Descriptive Statistics and Explore. Now, my, go my dependent list is simply going to be Apathy Sunday. I can also look at Wednesday, but I'm not going to do that at this point. And I'm going to do that factor or based on group. I want to select plots and I'm going to, it doesn't matter, I'm going to select normality plots with test is the important part and hit continue. Hit OK. Now what we see is we get group one, which is for Apathy Sunday. I get a skewness and kurtosis, which, you know, doesn't look uh, too bad. Kurtosis is a little high here and not too bad for uh, the group two, which was alcohol. Now what we see here is we have significantly non-normal data for the ecstasy group, which is shows us a 0.2, so we should probably 0.02. Therefore, uh, we should do non-parametric tests here. Now the non-parametric equivalent of the independent t-test would be the Mann-Whitney U. And the way we do that in SPSS is we'll go up to Analyze, Go down to non-parametric tests, and an easy way to do this in SPSS is just go to legacy dialogues. Now, if I select here, I've got the options of doing two independent samples, or if I had more, K independent samples. So that would be three, four, five independent samples. But this is like a t-test where there's only two samples. So I'm going to select that. Now, I'm going to determine whether or not there's a difference between ecstasy and alcohol on Sunday. So I put that into my test variable. And I'm going to select group as my grouping variable. And the groups are simply one and two. And remember, group one is ecstasy, group two is alcohol. Continue. Now, we've selected the Man whitney u test, which is good. I can also click on exact, and this will give me uh, more exact tests they can calculate. Now, the problem is it can take a long time with bigger data sets, so you may want to limit the time. But this one's a small data set, it should not be a problem. I'm going to hit continue, and then I'm going to just click on OK. Now, what we see is I get my ranks here, so and but then I get my test statistics. Now, for between uh, alcohol and ecstasy on Sunday, I get a Man Whitney U score of 35.5. And I also get a asymptotic significance of 0.269 and an exact significance of 0.288. So it looks like there's no difference on Sunday uh, in terms of the apathy scores, depending on whether you took alcohol or whether you took ecstasy. Now, let's do this test for a separate group that did this same thing, but on Tuesday night, and we're going to test them for apathy scores on Wednesday. So, if we go back up to Analyze, Non-Parametric Tests, Legacy Dialogues, Two Independent Samples, and this time I'm going to put Wednesday in. I can leave Sunday in there as well, the same groups, and click OK. Now, what we see is I get the ranks here for Wednesday as well and my sum of ranks. 
and I have test statistics for both Sunday and for Wednesday. So for Wednesday, the test statistic gives me a value of four and my asymptotic significance is less than 001. So it looks like there's a difference between alcohol and ecstasy on Wednesday. And I have an exact significance of less than 001. Now, if I want to go back up and determine what those differences are, I could go in and look at my um, descriptive statistics again. So one way I can do that is go back into data, analyze, descriptive statistics, explore, and this time I need to add in Wednesday into my dependent list and hit OK. And what we see is that for Wednesday, I have mean and a median of 33 for ecstasy, and I've got a median of 7.5 for alcohol. So it looks like the apathy scores were significantly higher on Wednesday for ecstasy as compared to alcohol. Okay, so let's take another slightly different scenario. Imagine now that this was instead of being se all separate groups, what if we had people that did ecstasy and alcohol on Saturday, and then we measured their scores repeatedly, so both on Sunday, and then we measured them again on Wednesday. Okay, I'm going to open up another file, and it's called, going to be called apathy today.sav Now here you can see the data are organized slightly differently. We've got ecstasy scores for Sunday and ecstasy scores for Wednesday and alcohol scores for Sunday and alcohol scores for Wednesday. Okay, so we're going to see if the people who did ecstasy changed between Sunday and Wednesday in terms of their apathy scores. And we're going to see if the people who did alcohol on Saturday changed between Sunday and Wednesday in terms of their apathy scores. So we're going to first check the data to determine whether it's significantly non-normal. Go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore, and I'm going to select all of the data and put them into my dependent list. I'm going to select plots and I want normality plots with tests and hit continue and OK. Now what we see in terms of the output is we've got our means, medians, standard deviations, etc. We can look at our skewness and kurtosis. Looks like it's a little high for Ecstasy Sunday. Uh, looks like it's a little high for Alcohol Wednesday. If I look at my test of normality, that also bears out in my Shapiro-Wilk test, which shows me I've got significantly non-normal for ecstasy on Sunday, and I've got significantly non-normal data for alcohol on Wednesday. Now, if I want to do the non-parametric tests on these data, I want to do what would be the equivalent of paired t-tests, but in a non-parametric way. And that would be separate for ecstasy and for alcohol. So what I'm going to do is go up to Analyze, Non-Parametric Tests, Legacy Dialogues, and then I'm going to select two related samples. Now into this, I'm going to put my pairs are going to be ecstasy for Sunday and Wednesday. And then my other pair will be alcohol Sunday and Wednesday. And we're going to leave the test type as Wilcoxon, and we can also select exact test in this case if we like. Now we're going to click OK. Now for the signed rank test, we get our sum of ranks scores, so positive ranks being 36 and negative ranks being 0, negative ranks being 47 for alcohol and positive ranks being 8. And those would be the values we would report as the Wilcoxon W. But often people will simply report the smallest value in terms of the sum of ranks as the test statistic. Down at the bottom, we've got our p values. So in terms of exact statistics, for Wednesday, we see there's a significant difference. p is 0 0.008. 
And for alcohol, there's a significant difference as P is 0 0.045. So what if we had more than two groups? Well, we would normally want to do an ANOVA. And in this case, what we are going to do is we're going to use the kruskal wallace test on a different set of data. So I'm going to open up a file called so you want to do a test.sav. Now what this data has is groups of people. We had people who ate one soya meal per week, two soy meals per week, three or four meals per week. And then what we've done is we've looked at sperm count. So the hypothesis here being that potentially eating more soy meals leads to lower sperm count in males. So we're going to look again at the descriptive statistics we're going to do that by going to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore, down to our dependent list being sperm count, and we're going to factor that on number of soy meals per week. And I'm going to select Plots, Normality Tests with Plots. Continue and hit OK. Now again, we get our descriptive statistics. I'm going to scroll down to our tests of normality we see that the Shapiro-Wilk test is significant for all of the groups except group number four. So we're going to do non-parametric tests on this data. The way we do that is by going up to Analyze, Non-parametric tests, Legacy dialogues, and this time we're going to select K independent samples or whatever number of independent samples you've got. We're going to select that. My test variable list is my dependent, which is sperm count, and my grouping variable is number of soy meals. And I can define the range, and the minimum is one, and my maximum is four, it's just the group numbers. I hit continue. I can select exact time limit per test. I'm just going to leave it at asymptotic only at this point. I could look at options, but there's nothing that I need in this, in this case. Now I can select OK and run the test. So in terms of the output for the Kruskal-Wallis test, what it does is give me the Kruskal-Wallis H, so that's our test statistic, which comes out to 8.659 with the degree of freedom of 3. Our p-value is 0 0.034. Now, Note that SPSS doesn't let us do post hoc tests very easily. We want to determine where any differences lie between these. What we then need to do is do the Man Whitney U test on the different pairs of variables. So one versus two, one versus three, one versus four and et cetera, all the different ones. And then we're going to do a Bonferroni correction by either multiplying our p-value that we get out of there by the number of tests that we're doing, or by dividing our critical alpha by the number of tests that we're doing. That will give us our Bonferroni correction, and we'll be able to tell whether or not there are any specific differences between these groups. Okay, finally, let's do the non-parametric equivalent of a repeated measures ANOVA. So I'm going to open up a file called diet.sav. Now what this data is, is weight of individuals at the beginning of a diet and then after the first and second months of completing this diet. Again, what we'll do is determine whether or not these data are normally distributed. We go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore, and I put all of the data in in the dependent list. My plots, I want normality plots with tests. Continue and hit OK. We see we get our descriptive statistics, which gives us our medians and our other, our other data that we're going to want to use in reporting. And we have our test of normality, which show that for weight at start and weight after one month, the Shapiro-Wilk test is significant, suggesting our data are significantly non-normal. 
So what we're going to do is do a non-parametric equivalent of a repeated measures ANOVA. Now, this test is called the Friedman's test, or Friedman's ANOVA. So we go up to Analyze, Non-parametric tests, down to Legacy Dialogues, and I'm going to select K-related samples. And my, those will all go into test variable. And we can see that it, I can ask for a Friedman. And I'm going to also select a Kendall's W, which might give me a measure of effect size. And I'm going to select OK. Now, for our Friedman's test, what we see is we get a Kendall's W of 0.1. And we've got a chi-square, which is the output that we're going to report chi-square of 0.2. And our degrees of freedom is 2. And the significance, or the p-value, is 0.905. So there's no significant differences between our dates or our times. So at the start, after one month, or two months. Again, if there were differences, we would want to determine where those differences lie using postdoc tests. And the post-hoc test we, we would use would be pairwise tests that would be the Wilcoxon signed ranks test, which would be the same idea as doing t-tests, but in this case, paired t-tests using a non-parametric equivalent. Then we would correct for the number of tests that we're doing using a Bonferroni correction. Okay, so hopefully that gets you doing the most common non-parametric statistics in SPSS.